Hello, so we're going to talk about mutations, um, what they are, and going to concentrate on particular types of mutations. All right, so mutation, basically anything that involves a change in the DNA sequence. Uh, and there's two main types, uh, chromosomal mutations, and that's where you have your chromosomes and maybe a bit gets broken off, say that bit at the end and is lost, or possibly stuck onto the end of another chromosome, or even broken off and then flipped around the other way and then stuck back onto the same chromosome, and so on. Okay, And that usually involves large chunks of DNA and many genes. But the kind of uh, mutations that we're going to concentrate on are gene or point mutations. And that usually means a single base change. So you have a sequence of bases, and then one of them ends up being changed, and that alters the sequence of DNA. And that is an example of a point mutation. And that usually happens within a single gene. <clears throat> Now, mutations are happening all the time. As I'm sitting here, I'm sure some of my DNA has become mutated. But mutagens, these are factors that we can be exposed to. They actually speed up the rate that mutations occur. at, And these can be things like UV light, um, fatty foods, cigarette smoke, um, benzene and petrol, um, and so on. Um, all of these things are mutagens, which basically speed up the rate that mutations can occur. At. And many mutagens, as a result, are carcinogens, but I'm not going to go into that in this PowerPoint. Right. Now, here's some different kinds of mutations, and we're going to start with substitution. And all substitution is is where a single base is swapped for a different one. So here, these bases have been swapped for these bases. And all that's resulted in is a single amino acid change. Because if you remember back in um, protein synthesis, each group of three bases, or triplets, codes for a single amino acid and that's what these boxes are each box represents an amino acid that's coded for by that sequence there or by that triplet so if a single um, basis change that will only affect a single amino acid that will still alter what the chain of them the order of um, amino acids in the chain which could then still affect the way that amino acid uh, sorry, polypeptide chain of amino acids folds up, uh, which will still affect the shape of the protein and how it functions, but it doesn't necessarily have to have a severe effect because of this wonderful thing called degeneracy. Now, what happens with degeneracy is that we have 20 different amino acids, but because we're using a three base sequence or a triplet system, each triplet coding for a different amino acid, we have 64 possible combinations of three bases. Um, so that means that several different triplets can still code for the same amino acid. Um, so uh, it means that if there's a single change, um, a single substitution, it means that there is a high likelihood, or at least a chance, that that change will just change it to a different triplet that still codes for the same amino acid, and that will result in absolutely no change in the polypeptide chain, which will then result in absolutely no change in the protein, which will continue to function as normal. But unfortunately, not all of mutations are quite so um, easygoing. For example, deletion. Deletion is basically where a single base is removed. And because it's removed, all of the other bases shift along one. And because every single base is shifted along one, it means that each triplet, after that mutation has occurred, after this point here, Every single amino acid after that point is changed. 
So originally it was histine, histine, histine. Now it's leucine starting off there and so on. Okay, which is basically a change in every single amino acid after that mutation. And we call that a frame shift because basically here is the frame on this one. And now with the removal of the A, the frame has shifted to encompass a slightly different sequence of bases. So these kind of mutations can be uh, have uh, massive implications. Another one which can have massive ins implications is the insertion mutation, which is where an extra base is inserted into the sequence. So again, I've done the whole uh, you know three-letter word sentence there, and all I've done is I've inserted an extra letter, and now it is basically frame shifted every single base that way by one space which has resulted in every single amino acid after that point after the mutation being different so on this one here here is the insertion which has shifted all of the bases that way caused a frame shift which has resulted in all of the amino acids after that point being different which again, because the chain of amino acids is different, it will result in the amino acids um, folding up differently, which will alter the shape of the protein, which will alter its function. All right, the final one that I'm going to look at today, inversion. This is basically where a single section or a single um, triplet is flipped over. So on this example with my sentences, it's the fat cat set. And here I've just flipped fat around, so it's now the taff cat set. And of course, because it's affecting a single triplet, it is going to be affecting a single amino acid in the chain. Right, now mutations are great, because without mutations we would not get new alleles because what's going on is we're changing the proteins and those proteins control metabolic pathways as I spoke about in another PowerPoint that I've done and if you have changed that protein it will affect um, the particular trait that um, that particular metabolic pathway is involved in be it pigmentation or um, a particular hormone or protein being found in uh, the milk produced by an organism or uh, you know things like that and if that change is an advantage it's a helpful mutation then that particular allele will be selected for and become more common in the population but if it's neutral or harmful if it's harmful it will become less common in the population and if it is a neutral mutation then it will probably persist in the population um, until an environmental change and if then the change in the environment causes it to be helpful then it will be, become more common but if that change um, causes a mutation to become harmful then obviously that allele will become less common in the population so mutations are basically the driving force of new alleles which is um, which means new traits, more variation in a population, and the driving force as far as uh, material or raw material for natural selection to occur. Um, right, thank you very much again.